Okay, uh, today I'm going to walk you guys through exercise 12, which was the first half of your formative assessment. So let's see how we did. Um, the setup is two parts. First of all, you need to be able to calculate the percent change or the growth rate for the years that are given. So to do that, the first step is we have to get these nominal GDPs, you're given five of them, and we have to turn them into real GDPs. When we do that, obviously we're going to uh, divide the nominal GDP by the deflator, that's the formula. So um, let's make some quick predictions. Okay. First of all, we ought to notice that the base year for this is 2009. Now, how do we know that? Well, we know the base year is 2009 because 100 is always the deflator for the base year. Unless by some crazy incidence, there's no inflation between one year and, and another year. But that's always going to happen, so it's safe to say that the base year is always 100. So, again, we can predict very quickly that this year, the, well, the, the nominal GDP, it's not going to change when we convert it to the real GDP because that's the value that we're adjusting to. So, we can go ahead and take this one across, and it's going to be the exact same 393.51. All right? Now, for the other four, we just let's make a quick prediction about what's going to happen with the mathematics. Okay, when we do this, we're going to take the nominal GDP and divide it by the deflator. And that's going to equal real GDP. So again, just quickly, I can predict if I take any number, call it 2, and I divide it by 1, well, what happens to 2? Well, nothing. It stays the same. Okay, so again, that's the same as what we have here with 100. 1 is 100 in this system, okay? Next, if I take 2 and divide it by a number that's greater than 1, so 2, well, what happens to my original 2? It gets smaller, it goes to 1. So here, these numbers that are bigger than 100, we can predict that these two numbers are going to get smaller. And again, that's where the term deflator comes from. So this and that are both going to get smaller, while the first number is going to stay the same. It's going to be itself. Finally, if I take this number and I divide it by something that's less than 1, so 0.5, just to make it easy, well, 2 divided by 0.5 is going to result, 2 is going to go to a bigger number, 4. It's going to get larger. So in this case, uh, with these two numbers, we can predict that they're going to get bigger. And sometimes we, we refer to these numbers that are less than 100. We call them inflators instead of deflators. It doesn't really matter. It's the same concept, but maybe you should know the term. Okay, well, let's do a little math with the actual numbers, and let's see what we got. Okay, so I'm just going to set up the first one, and um, the rest, I'll just put the answers up for it. Okay, so the first one again, we're going to take 345.12 and divide it by its deflator 94.8. And since you get to use a calculator, so do I. So there we go, 345. And we come up with 3.64. You can just round to two decimals, that's plenty. So, That's going to go right up here. Now remember, it's going to be times 100, so I kind of cheated here, and I just did that automatically. We're going to move the decimal 2 to the right since we're multiplying by 100. So it's going to be 364. And like we predicted, the GDP did go up. The nominal GDP went up when we ran it through the deflator. OK, let's see how the rest come out. Okay, let me point out something real quickly that I did wrong and I just need to make a quick adjustment. When we took this and got 364.05 and I said just 364 was enough, that's actually wrong because we are going to turn it into a real GDP. So we do need one decimal in that. Okay, so 364.05 multiplied by 100, we get to 364.05, which would round to 364.1. So that's what you see here. Okay, on the rest of these, we see exactly. Um, Everything we predicted happened, happened. 
This one came up just like we thought. So did the next. Obviously, this stayed the same. And then these two both came down. Okay? So again, we can be reasonably certain that we did this right. Okay, last thing we need to do is we need to figure out this last column, the growth rate. All of this was just sort of prologue to getting here. So, again for this, it's our very simple formula. We've worked with it a bunch. It's new minus old divided by the old. So, I'll set up the first one and then we'll just look at the answers. So the first one, our new number is the second number. So we're saying the growth rate here, by the way, we're not solving for a growth rate there. We don't know how much this country grew in this year because we don't know the previous year. So we're really just solving for these four. So 369.8 is the new, minus 364.1 divided by the same number. Okay? So that's set up properly, punch it into your calculator, it should be right, and the rest will go the exact same way. Remember, with each one, we're using the new year. So when we solve for this, we're doing 393.51 minus the previous year. You don't go back to the first year, you just go to the previous year, okay? Okay, one, one thing real quickly before we look at some answers, we probably should predict how big these percentage growths are gonna be. So, looking at the first one here, we see from 364 to 369, that's not that big of a jump. It is an increase, but it's not massive. Not when we look at the second one, where we go from 369 all the way up to 393. And remember, these are in real numbers, so we're comparing apples to apples. So we can easily predict that this growth here, the second growth, is gonna be bigger than that first growth, okay? So our first two numbers do, they come out to that. So 1.6, yeah, it's positive, but it's not a whole lot not nearly as big as the 6.4 behind it. Okay, to wrap up real quickly, we see our answers here. And again, prediction-wise, we could have said that, yeah, this still looks like pretty significant growth, right? 3.3. But again, in, in real terms, it went up by 13. Whereas here, it went up by, well, 24. So again, it's easy to see that, you know, these numbers are pretty consistent with what we're seeing over here. And then finally, we can see that this change is pretty minuscule altogether, which is reflected by the uh, growth rate here. Do note in all of these that I put percent signs, the correct answer is going to have a percent sign there, because we are talking about a rate. Okay? All right, finally, the last part of this question asked, did overall economic, economic activity in 2010 uh, occur? Did it grow? Okay, well, that's real easy. As long as we have a positive number here, then yes, it, it did grow. There's no negative numbers, so I don't even care what uh, you know. I don't even care what uh, what year I'm looking at. But just to be official, 2010, we see that it was 3.3 percent. So in a good answer, if it was written, I would talk about yes, it did because 3.3 percent is greater than uh, than zero percent, um, and that overall we saw that GDP went from 393 up to 406. Okay, that's exercise 12.